So finally, my van is upgraded with the proper battery, which is a 100 amp hour lithium battery, as well as a second solar panel up on the roof. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about that and the improvements that I've made. In the previous episode, I discussed three things I didn't like about my Cascade camper. One of the things that I pointed out that I wasn't happy with is the electronics that it came with because it's very outdated. It had a 75 amp hour AGM battery. There were a lot of instances when I woke up in the morning and the little display that's on the side over here would display a frown face. And the frown face basically means that there's just no more capacity left on the battery. So if it was early in the morning and I wanted to use a device, I would have to get out of the van, turn the engine on, come back inside, do whatever I had to do. For a long time, that really, really annoyed me and I couldn't stand it anymore. And I thought that the best option for me was to upgrade to a 100 amp hour lithium battery, but that came with a whole slew of challenges, most of which I couldn't figure out on my own. This stuff is way beyond my knowledge and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I could have done it on my own, I could have learned it on my own, but I'm no electrician and I don't trust myself. <laughs> I really don't. If I'm gonna sleep here at night and I'm gonna sleep here comfortably, I'd rather have a professional do it and I'd rather pay a professional fee to do it as well because believe me, it wasn't cheap and that's one thing we're gonna get into right now. So now let's talk a little bit about the juicy bits here. The van was already equipped with a SunPower Yachts 120 watt solar panel. So I added another 110 watt solar panel. So now I have a total of 220 watts, which is fantastic and it's all I need. The van was also equipped with an ePever 10 amp MPPT charge controller for the solar panel. Believe me, if you're not familiar with these things, I wasn't either at one point, but now I'm starting to understand what they are. The solar charge controller basically maintains the current coming from your solar panels and distributes it to your battery in a proper manner. So this way, if it notices that it's fully charged, it doesn't deliver more power than it's needed. As opposed to hooking up your solar panels directly to the battery, you hook it up to the MPPT first, so this way it knows what to do with the power once it gets it. So the 10 amp charge controller just wasn't enough because each solar panel is rated at 5.9 amps. So if you multiply that by two, you get what I'm saying. So I had to upgrade to the next level up. And then comes the battery itself. There are a lot of different batteries out there. If you watch my previous episode, there was one particular battery that was about $311. I could have easily gone with that battery, but I'm kind of a tech nerd. I like to see data. When I woke up in the morning and I saw that the battery was drained, I didn't know what percentage of the battery was drained. I didn't know if it was 50%. I didn't know if the system was lying to me or if it was accurate or not because as soon as I turned the car on, it would read that it was absolutely full. Like, I'm thinking to myself, are you, how, how is this accurate? How am I supposed to know how much battery level I have? So this made me very frustrated. So for my lithium battery, I decided to get a smart battery. These smart batteries are top tier. They have a battery management system or otherwise known as BMS that can tell you what the temperature of the battery is. It could also heat up the battery whenever it goes below 30 degrees. I mean, it's ridiculous how smart these batteries are these days. And it also tells me how much current is coming into the battery, how much, is, how much current is going out of the battery, and it gives me a little meter of how much battery life I have left from zero to 100%. When I saw all these things on Amazon, I had to have it because this was the solution that I needed in my life. And so last but not least, the battery charger that came with the Cascade Campers was something called a battery doctor. And the battery doctor does not work with lithium batteries. So that had to be removed. To replace the battery doctor, I needed something called the DC to DC charger which basically does the exact same thing that the battery doctor does, except now it works specifically with a lithium battery. Now, in case you're interested in some of these products, if you want to buy them for yourself or do a little bit more research, I've included links down in the description below. Now, as far as the other electronics that the van had, they didn't change at all. The small little MT50 display that you see on the side over here, that hasn't been changed. And a lot of you guys have been asking, what kind of roof fence do I have? It's a Ventline VP543 roof air vent. So now let's talk a little bit about the installation. As you may or may not know, I know nothing about vans. I'm two and a half, three months into this. It's my first time ever living inside of a van. I don't know anything about electronics and I'm not an electrician. So 
naturally, I'm going to be looking for a professional to install this for me. I would say probably for the last month and a half, I've been looking for somebody to do this installation for me. And the type of people that I met, either people who wanted to learn on the job on my time or people who were very experienced but didn't have a lot of time on their hands to do it. So they would give me ridiculous time slots three months into the future and I just couldn't wait for that. So after looking for such a long time, I found another company called Rogue Van Company. They're here out in San Diego, but they charged me an arm and a leg to install this at a whopping $175 per hour. Initially, I paid for three hours of time, but it wasn't completed in three hours of time, and it took an additional two hours, so I paid for five hours of time for this installation to be completed. But to be honest with you, at the end of the day, I was just happy that the work was done in a satisfactory way. I bought two circuit breakers. One was 35 amps for the auxiliary battery, and for the house battery, I bought a 25 amp one, and I did this after reading the DC to DC charge controller's manual, this is what they suggested. I also bought Sikaflex 291. It's got a weird name, but this is the enamel that the guy used to secure the 110 watt solar panel up on the roofs. After I got there, he started installing the solar panel. And once I noticed that he was getting his work done, there was really nothing for me to do around there. So I decided to take an Uber and drive down to the shopping center and get some work done over there. But in about two, three hours, I came back and I noticed that he was trying to pull the front chair out. And I realized that the reason why he was trying to pull that out was he was looking for a 12 volt source to plug the DC to DC charge controller in because that's what you need for the DC to DC charge controller for it to work. And luckily on the Dodge Ram Pro Master City vans, there's a 12 volt plug right on the back over here. So I told him to, to leave the seat as is and not take it out. And so he went to work straight in the back over there and, and he plugged it to the back and now it works flawlessly. The way the DC to DC charge controller works is that it's not on all the time. It's only on whenever you have the ignition on. So if the ignition is on, it's drawing power directly from the alternator, sending it directly to the house battery. The DC to DC to charge control that I got is the Renogy 20 amp DC to DC charge controller. It sends 20 amps directly to the house battery. And if my figures are correct, 20 amps equals to 200 watts. If you guys know anything about electricity, comment down in the description below if that's accurate or not. But hypothetically speaking, with the 200 watts or 20 amps coming directly from the alternator to the house battery, and now with the 220 watts that I have in my solar panel, theoretically speaking, I would get 50% of whatever that's up here because you're not always going to get the full 220. So let's just say that I get 10 amps from the solar panels, which I have been, and 20 from this. If you do the calculations, it's a 100 amp hour battery and you're getting 30 while you're driving and from the sun. So that means that I can get the battery from zero to 100% in a little over three hours. That's fantastic and that's more than what I need. As a matter of fact, I've been running a couple of different experiments. With the circuit breaker that's in the front, I turned off the DC to DC charge controller and for the last couple of days, I've been living off of just the solar panels. During the day, I get anywhere between 7 to 10 amps going directly to the house battery. But I realize in the morning when I wake up, I'm somewhere around 80 to 85%. And then sometime around 4 or 5 o'clock, I notice that I'm back to 100% once again. So that means that while I'm in San Diego still, with the San Diego sun that's out here, I can theoretically live off of just the solar panels because the laptop that I have, this is a 2021 MacBook Pro, 20 hours of battery life. So that means I can work on this thing all day, probably for a couple of days, and not have to recharge that. And my other devices are all, are all USB based. And as far as the inverter goes, that's probably next on the chopping block. I'm probably gonna get another one. But the inverter gets used probably every other day because I have to cook my eggs. I have a little Dash egg boiler that's 360 watts, I believe, that uses about 30 amps, I've, no I've noticed. So I use that every now and again, but I've noticed that I can live off of the solar panels. And so as a result of that, I've turned off the DC to DC charger because I don't want the house battery to be charged at 100% capacity every single time. So I'm okay with having my batteries charged 90% of the time. That's more than what I had before. But overall, I am very, very happy with not only the charge controller, which I haven't been using to be honest with you, the, the extra solar panel, 
and the lithium battery pack. Now, one thing I completely forgot to mention about the battery pack is that it has an app. The app will tell you what the percentage of the battery is, how much amps are going in, how much amps are going out, and what the temperature of the battery is. Like seriously, mind blown. This is ridiculous stuff. And on top of that, now I can go into very cold climates and not have to worry about the battery getting super cold. So if I go somewhere, let's just say I go to Colorado tomorrow, it's gonna get below 30 degrees. And if it does get below 30 degrees, the battery management system inside the battery will recognize that and then turn on a heating element so this way the battery can charge once again. But not only that, but it gives me everything that I need on my phone. This is really, really awesome. This is more than I could have hoped for and now I'm super happy with this fan. If you enjoyed this episode and you learned something from it, please give it a like. And if you enjoyed my content up to this point, also make sure to subscribe. There's a lot more coming. I'm going to be doing lots of traveling because that is what I bought this van for. And that about does it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Ciao for now.